Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 20 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to do 3D graphics and 3D animations using Python. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong cup of black coffee. That is straight up black coffee, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. That's your go juice. Go get you some. I am also going to need you to call up your most excellent Visual Studio code. Calling up your most excellent Visual Studio code. And as you do, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your help and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's talk about what we are going to do today. What we're going to do is continue to work on this uh, 3D clock model, this analog clock model. And what we're going to do today Today is we're going to look at the homework solution to the homework that I gave you in lesson number 19. And what your homework was, was to take that analog clock model and to put the numbers around the dial, the dial numbers on and get them in the right position. I need you guys to leave a comment down below. Let me know how many of you were able to do it. If you were able to do it, leave a comment. I am legend. And those of you who were not able to do it, leave a comment that you folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay. Anyway, this is what I really like is even if you're not able to do it, if you try to do it and you struggle with it and you think about it and you fail and you really think a lot about it. And then if you come in and watch me do it, you, it's like the light bulb goes on. Oh yes. Now I understand it. But to really learn, you've got to kind of struggle with it on your own to begin with. So it's really okay if you're not always able to get these homeworks, because if you struggle and fail and then see how how I do it. You're actually learning something. Okay, so let's get started with where we left off. I think uh, we left off uh, the last uh, clock model was in lesson number 18. So I will hook some brothers and sisters up here by letting you start with the code that we had put together in lesson number 18. You can go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and you can use the little search bar here and you can search on Python 3D graphic tutorial 18. It will bring you to this page. I've got the code here. You can click on the little double page icons. It will select the text, right mouse click copy, and now come back to Visual Studio Code. And we are working in the vPython. We are working in the vPython folder. We will add a new file, which we will call, uh, what will we call this? Annotated, annotated, annotated clock.py. The dot py is kind of important. And boom, we've got a fresh new Python program just wait, waiting to be written. I will come in and I will paste our code from lesson number 18. And just to make sure that all the quantum mechanics in the universe are correct, let's go ahead and run this to make sure that nothing broke since last week. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And boom. Yeah, that kind of scared me. But yeah, it is actually 20, 25 seconds till noon. But when I saw the, the, the clock hands there, I thought that the clock was broken. But no, that's really what time it is. So that is all working properly. I want to go back and put our label on up here just to kind of practice. This is what we had done in lesson 19, but I can add that in really quickly, I do believe. And I'm going to take this darn print statement out. It's line 55. That just slows me down. Kill the program. And I'll come up right before the while loop. And let's go ahead and put in that line of code where we put a label up top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it my label. And in my label, <clears throat> I'm going to have it going to be a text. 
and then what is my text? My text that I want to label it is going to be equal to Texas time. Texas time. I suggest that if you're in Arizona, you would label yours Arizona time. That's just what I would do if I was in Arizona. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to align it. The alignment is going to be center. <clears throat> and guys, remember, and this is going to come into play here in what we do today. Aligning its center aligns it left and right with the origin. It aligns it left and right with the center, not top to bottom. It still puts the bottom. Okay, it still references from the bottom of the bounding box of the text. So it's always your text in effect. You could think of it as a little bit high. So you're going to have to probably deal with that if you haven't figured that out already when you start putting those numbers on there. We're going to go ahead and say color is equal to color dot orange. And then what we are going to do is we're going to go and go ahead and say that the height of the text is going to be text height. And then we probably ought to define what text height is here. So I'm going to go ahead and say text height is equal to, let's say it's the clock radius divided by four. I think that's what we did last time. If I remember right, I think we did about, uh, mm, I think we did that. So we'll we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and try that. And then let me come back down and see if there's anything else. So we've got the height. Okay. We've got to position it as well. So I'm going to say position is equal to vector and then where are we going to put it? Well, in the X position, we're not going to move it, so we'll leave it at zero. So that means that text label will be aligned with the origin and it will be the center of the text is aligned with the origin. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it a little bit bigger than the radius, a little bit further away than the radius. And so I'm going to say that how high up do I want to go? I want to go 1.1 times the clock radius. Now, no matter what the radius is, the label's going to be a little bit outside the clock. And so that is just a kind of a handy way to do it. And then if you remember also, it's putting the center of the text at the origin. No, it's putting the backside of the text at the origin. So we need to move it by half the depth and then that will uh, that will put it in the right position. And so we're going to say that is minus clock thickness divided by two. OK, and so that will align the text with the clock face because the text measures things relative to the backside of the text to where the clock face measures things relative to the center of the clock face. That's the difference between how vPython treats a cylinder, which the clock face is, and text. Okay, so we've just got to make that adjustment because that is the way vPython references things. Okay, let's see here. And then I think what we also are going to have to do is in order for this uh, in order for this business to work here, this minus clock thickness divided by two, we need to go ahead and put a depth. We need to put a depth. So we're going to make the depth of that text is going to be equal to the clock thickness. And that way the text thickness will be the same as the clock thickness. And then we scoot it back a little bit with this minus clock T over two. Uh, did I define clock T? Yeah, clock T is uh, clock T is is defined. All right. So now that should go ahead and put that label on there with a little luck. Shazam! Boom! Okay, I guess that's not such a big deal because that's just where we were last week. I got the, the title back on. Okay, now we need to put those letters on there. Okay, now we need to put those letters on there. I mean, those numbers, those numerical labels.
Okay. Now, what you know is, is that this is the 12 o'clock position. Well, if we're going to label, we don't want to start at 12 because that's the last one. Where do we want to start? We want to start at 1 and we want to put the one right here. Now, as I always tell you guys, you've got to get things working on paper before you jump in and start trying to do code. Because if you just jump in and start doing coding, you're just going to be doing trial and error. So let's see if we can sketch this thing out and let's see if we can get it to work the first time or almost the first time. Okay, so this is a circle. And what we remember is in math, and in programming, this along the positive x-axis is considered to be zero degrees. And so you start here at zero degrees. And then also in math and in Python and in programming, if you go counterclockwise, that is considered to be positive. So this would be zero. And then this would be rotating in the positive direction. Well, the problem is a clock doesn't work that way. Where do you want to start with the clock? You want to start up here. OK, and so to get your clock oriented with the way that Python thinks, you don't want to start here at an angle of zero because you would start here. You want to start at an angle of pi over two, which is 90 degrees. Remember, there's 360 degrees in a circle. And so if you want to rotate left by a quarter of the circle, that would be 90 degrees. OK, but in the programming language, it works in radians and there are two pi radians in one full circle. So if I want to rotate left by 90 degrees, I would rotate left by pi over 2. Pi over 2 in radians, pi over 2 in radians is the same as 90 degrees in degrees. So where do we want to start? We want to start at an angle of pi over 2, and that would be up here. OK, but in fact, we don't want to start at an angle of pi over 2. We want to start here at this one position. And what would that be? That would be pi over 2. OK, that's here. That is pi over 2, right? But then what I want to do is I need to now, in going clockwise, I don't add a what. I subtract what? How much do I subtract? Well, the full circle, which is 2 pi, divided by how many steps do I want to make? Well, I want to make 12. OK, so this first position here where I want to start is positive pi over 2 and then minus 2 pi over 12. And that should be right at the 1 o'clock position. And so kind of the way you could look at it is your starting angle is pi over 2. That's straight up. That's 12. And then each time through, you want an angle increment of 2 pi, the whole circle, divided by 12, because there's 12 segments, 12 numbers we want to put in. And then we put this negative sign here, and that way the clock is running the right direction, because clock <clears throat> wants to go clockwise, the Python wants to go counterclockwise. So to get them running together, we do this. So then in the end, each time through, the angle is equal to the angle plus the angle increment. And that is sort of like what I said here. We will start at pi over 2. And then our very first number will go at pi over 2 minus 2 pi over 12. And then every time through, we're going to subtract 2 pi over 12, and that will increment us to the next number. And so in recap, the angle increment each time through the loop is going to be 2 pi over 12 in the negative direction. And then the angle is going to be whatever the angle was you were at before, plus the angle increment. And then that should just step through and put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. OK, and if that doesn't make sense, go back and watch it. Watch what I just did again, because that's kind of important to understand that. So now what we are going to do is let's set this up so you can see we want to start with an angle of pi over two. 
All right, so we will do that just like I said, and then we'll put that increment in before we go into the while loop. And so I better show you the code or you're going to get really mad at me really quick. So before we go into our main while loop here, we are going to what? We're going to create a few parameters. Now our angle is going to be equal to np numpy np dot pi okay divided by two right that is going to be the straight up position okay now we need to figure out the angle increment and what is that going to be that's going to be uh, two times np dot pi that's how far it is all the way around but we don't want to go all the way around we want to go in 12 increments so each step is going to be 2 times np dot pi divided by 12 and because we want to go the clockwise direction I need to put a minus there okay so angle we start straight up angle increment is going to be 1 12th of a circle each time through the loop and then like I said we don't want to actually start at 12 we want to start at 1 so I'm going to go ahead and say here that angle is equal to angle plus angle increment so when I go in my for loop I'm already my angle is going to be at that one o'clock position all right now what do I do I am going to say four I guess I ought to do one other thing I ought to go ahead and say that my text h here is going to be equal to this is going to be a different uh, I'll call this something different. I will call this my number height, my num height, and that's going to be clock r divided by 8. Because that Texas time was a little bit too tall for the letters, the labels. So I'm just going to try to take the radius of the clock and divide by 8, and that's how tall my letters are going to be. So that's going to be my num h all right now we're going to go for i in range where do i want to start i want to start at the one position i want to go to the 12 position but remember the goofy thing about python if you say go from 1 to 12 it stops at 11. so if i want to go from 1 to 12 i've got to tell it 13 and then it will stop at 12. one of those goofy things about python but we've run into that before and then you should say okay in steps of one like that now what are we going to do we are going to say clock number now also remember I'm going to do the increment after the first label because I already have the angle proper for the one o'clock position. So I'm just going to go ahead and say clock number is equal to text. And then what do I want my text to do? Well, I want it to align and then I want it to align center. Does that make sense? I'm going to align center and then text the text that I actually want to do is going to be equal to the text is going to be equal to the string of I now why do you have to do that because you label with strings okay the text is a string and I is a number so I have to take I the number and turn it into a string okay you should I think that you should understand that okay so now I also need to tell it where I want it to go well I'm going to say its position <clears throat> is going to be equal to that's got to be a vector okay and then uh, what you have to remember now is you have to remember on a circle on a circle you have an x on a circle you're going to have an x value and a y value okay on the circle as you go around you're always going to have an x and a y value and if you remember from the earlier lessons x is equal to whatever your radius is times the cosine of the angle 
and your y value is equal to r times the sine of the angle. And if you don't recognize this, you need to go back and watch some of those earlier lessons. But that's just a quick reminder that that will give you this x and y value on the perimeter of the circle. Does that make sense? OK, but do we want our labels out on the edge of the clock face? No, we want them in, so it needs to be smaller than that. But remember, you don't subtract anything from that. You scale it, okay? So the position is going to be equal to, I will come back over here for you, yell at me. Okay, so the position is going to be equal to the vector, all right? And then what do we start with? Well, we kind of got clock radius, but that's too big. So I'm going to say clock radius times 0.75 because I don't want it out on the edge of the clock. I want it inside a little bit. So I'll multiply it by 0.75 and then the x value is what? It is the cosine. And how do I do cosine? Our friend Mr. NumPy NP dot cosine of what? Of the angle. All right. So that and now the y value is what? The clock r. And we need to do the same thing times 0.75, okay, times np dot sine, np dot sine, sine of what? The angle. All right. And then on z, we are not going to do anything on z. We're going to leave it at zero like that. Okay, I think that will be pretty good. I'm just thinking here to go very carefully. Okay, so and we've closed uh, we've closed that parentheses. So now we can go on to our next parameter. I'm sorry. I just need to be very, very mindful to do this right. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and put in the text height so that, or uh, did we do the height already? I can't remember if I did the height. No, I didn't. So I will need to put a height here. Okay, and so we are going to say height is equal to num height and then the depth is equal to the clock thickness so right i want those labels to be the same thickness i want those labels to be the same thickness as the clock and this time i think i do want them out a little bit in z and so i'm not going to adjust z any so depth is equal to the clock thickness and then let's go ahead and say color is equal to color dot orange like that okay i think that is really pretty good. I've got the height, I've got the depth. All right, so let's see if we can run this. First of all, I've probably got some errors in there, so let's see if we can find the errors. And let's, uh, probably didn't kill it last time, so kill it, come back. Okay, so yeah, we got an error in there because you see the hands are dead, which means I typed something in wrong. And so, uh, trying to look and see here. Let me kill this all the way, try it again. Okay, now let's see if we can see. A line is not defined, what? What is this nonsense? A line is not defined. Where did I do that? Ah, a line. Man, that was crazy, right? That was crazy. A line is equal to center with center. <laughs> Man, that was insanity there. All right, let's give it a try now.
Hopefully you guys saw that that was not a smart thing to do. Okay, now <laughs> what did we do? We at least got all of our things at the one o'clock position, so that is some progress. Did I not put the position in there? It looks like maybe, or my position is somehow wrong. Okay. Oh, I think I know what I did. I've also got to, I, I left everything at that same position. I think I must have a mistake in that position vector. Position is equal to clock vector. And I do have an angle. I do have an angle. I do have an angle increment. Ah, you know what I didn't do? I didn't increment the angle every time. Okay, so remember I wanted it at that one o'clock position. I got it at the one o'clock position, but you only want the one at the one o'clock position. So what do you have to do every time through? You've got to increment this angle, right? You put it at the one o'clock position here. Now you have to increment it every time. So I'm going to say angle is equal to angle plus angle increment and angle increment will go clockwise because I put that negative there. So I don't need to subtract it. I already put the negative there, so it should go in the right direction. So let's try this now. Boom! Do you see that? Look at that! Alrighty! Now, let's not get too excited because I think you're going to see that there is a little bit of a problem. And if I make those letters bigger, I think that you can see it better. And then you're going to see that we are going to have to do a little adjustment. Let's make the numbers, the clock radius divided by four. So they're bigger. And I think that will exaggerate the error. Yeah. Okay, now do you see the problem? The 12 is too high and the 6 is too high. And do you see how the 3 is not lined up properly? This is the way you have to see it. Let's go over here to the 3. So I said put it right here. But remember, left and right, when I say align center, it's aligning left and right with the center of the box. And so you see, like if I look at the six, it's not too far left, it's not too far right. If I look at the 12, it's not too far left, it's not too far right. So when you give it that aligned center, that is a, a, an alignment left and right. But you don't have a parameter that you can set for up and down. So it puts the bottom of the text where you told it to put it. So when I said put three, at the three o'clock position, it put what? It put, it put the bottom of the three and the bottom of the 12 and the bottom of the six. So you see that whole thing is up too far. Well, how far do I want? First of all, which direction do I want to move it? I want to move the position in the Y direction. I want to move it down and I want to move it down by how much? Well, if it's text height, it's off not by text height. It's off by text height divided by two. And if I move it down by text height divided by two, it should align perfectly. Now, where would that be? That would be here where I'm putting the numbers on. And then remember when I did my position, here is the Y position according to the trigonometry, that's right. But now I have to adjust for the fact that I wanted the middle in that position and not the bottom. So I need to subtract what? I need to subtract num height divided by two. All right, let's see what happens there. All right, look at that. 
boom, everything right in the right spot. Now I will say now you can see that those are a little bit too big. Those numbers are a little bit too big. So we need to tweak those down and we would do that by the number height is the radius of the clock instead of divided by four. I think we better divide by six and I think that would probably be more well proportioned. Let's give that a try. All right, boom, look at that. I think that is perfect. Now also in this case, in the Z direction, we didn't compensate for the position of the letters at uh, the position of the numbers and those numbers are the same thickness as the clock. So they're going to be extruded a little bit by half the radius of the clock, but that's actually good because you do want them sticking up a little bit. So do you see how Texas time we have aligned perfectly with the clock face because it is above the clock face, but then these numbers themselves, they are the same thickness of the clock, but they are extruding from the clock face by half its thickness. And that actually is kind of good. I think that makes that looks real good. So guys, we have a clock here. It's a live clock. It's showing the time and we have modeled this thing from scratch. And I think that is really cool. Okay, guys, your homework for next week is to continue to go in and annotate and add and make your clock more snazzy. You know, play around with colors, play around with how you do the lettering, play around with your labels, and then get the snazziest clock that you can. And then what I want you to do is take a screenshot of it or use your phone to just record your screen and then upload that to YouTube. Then in the comments down below, put a link over to your clock, your uh, animation, uh, your model, your clock model. And let's see who comes up with with the most crazy clock, right? Which one of you guys can come up with the most impressive analog clock? Okay, guys, what we're going to do next week, and then that's your homework for next week. Then next week, we kind of gone as far as we're going to go, I think, with the clock here. And next week, what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to get input from the users, how to have like radio buttons or slider bars or things like that, widgets as we're going to call them. And so there'll be widgets where you can get information or the program can get information from the user. Okay, guys, I hope you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I am having making them. If you're enjoying them, be sure to give a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe, make sure you ring that bell so you will get notifications when future Future lessons come out. Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.